Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Alright, moving forward. With a strange radar dome on top of the fuselage and a lack of weaponry, it's very hard to believe that the Boeing E-3 Century is one of the most important aircraft for the United States military. The radar dome allows the E-3 to serve as an airborne warning and control system to provide reconnaissance and facilitate communication in the skies. The first E-3 was delivered to the U.S. military in March 1977. And since then, it has provided superior defensive and offensive capabilities. The E-3 is 152 feet long, features a wingspan of about 145 feet, and weighs 185,000 pounds. Moreover, it carries state-of-the-art systems to cater to the need for top-class reconnaissance in hostile environments. The E-3 Century can be scrambled at a moment's notice. The ground crews ensure it's ready for flight. They inspect the landing gear basic avionics and fluid levels before takeoff. When the ground crews give a green signal for takeoff, the pilots enter the cockpit and start the engines. The E-3 slowly taxis towards the runway and then takes off. The E-3 is capable of flying in the air for more than eight hours. However, if the mission requires it to stay in the air for a longer time, a fuel tanker can be used to extend its flight time. The E-3 is remarkable during flight in terms of speed, altitude, or maneuverability. It takes the radar thousands of feet into the air and provides detailed information on everything from hostile aircraft to weather conditions. This sort of information is invaluable, not only during a battle, but also during routine troop movements. The E-3 usually gathers large amounts of data and information which is analyzed and monitored by 12 to 20 highly trained mission crew members. The radar dome is 30 feet in diameter and 6 feet thick, with an effective range of up to 250 miles. The E-3 Century has a specialized mission suite which includes consoles that display computer processed data in graphic and tabular format on video screens. The mission crew members use relative data to perform surveillance, identification, weapons control, battle management, and communications functions. The 
E3 is a tough plane to get used to, which is why a new pilot learning to fly an E3 Century is made to perform what's known as a touch-and-go landing. During such a procedure, the pilot lands on a runway and takes off again without coming to a full stop. The aircraft then circles the airport in a defined pattern, also known as a circuit, and repeats the maneuver. This allows many landings to be practiced in a short time. The E3 Century is a highly complex aircraft, which requires regular maintenance in order to remain mission ready. When an aircraft lands, the maintenance teams thoroughly evaluate the aircraft to ensure everything is in working order. The maintenance crew specifically inspects the landing gear. Drain lines, radar dome, and avionics. Any part that is out of order or not working is immediately replaced or repaired. The crew then snaps into action and begins topping off engine oil lubricating landing gear and inspecting engines for potential damage. These procedures ensure that the E3 Century is ready to take its next flight at a moment's notice. In addition to inspecting the E3 Century's engines, the maintenance teams regularly maintain its auxiliary power unit. The APU is a small gas turbine engine mounted in the tail cone of the aircraft, which provides electrical and mechanical power for the main engines. Once the engines are started and generators are online, the APU automatically shuts down after completing the taxi check. All in all, the main purpose of the APU is to kickstart the engines. It's a vital component of the aircraft ensuring that it is up and running at a moment's notice. Therefore, it must be maintained regularly. Since the 1970s, the Boeing 747 has been one of the most widely used aircraft globally. However, only a few are aware of the specially modified aircraft that Boeing has developed using the 747 airframe. For instance, the Boeing E-4 is used as a strategic command and control military aircraft operated by the United States Air Force. It serves as a survivable mobile command post for the National Command Authority, specifically the President of the United States, the Secretary of Defense, and military VIPs in the event of a crisis. For this reason, this aircraft has several unique capabilities. It's capable of surviving an electromagnetic pulse blast and carries a wide range of anti-aircraft countermeasures. Even though it is a very advanced aircraft, it uses several analog instruments, as these have better EMP protection than digital systems. The latest models of the E-4 even feature special shielding against heat and nuclear effects. The E-4 can stay airborne for a full week in the event of an emergency, utilizing KC-135 tankers to refuel mid-air. The E-4 can operate with a crew of up to 112 people, 
including flight and mission personnel, which is by far the largest crew capacity that any aircraft offers. The E-4 is 234 feet long, which provides ample space inside the plane, featuring three operational decks, upper, middle, and lower. Each deck offers a specific purpose. For instance, the flight deck contains stations for the pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer plus a special navigation station, unlike the commercial Boeing 747s. The middle deck has a separate conference room. It's a secure area for conferences and briefings, which contains a conference table for up to nine people. Finally, the lower deck contains the equipment room, which includes the aircraft's water supply tanks, 1,200 kilovolt amperes electrical power panels, step-down transformers, the maintenance console, and mission-specific equipment. Each deck features special communication areas, which the U.S. president and military leaders use to directly contact troops and foreign leaders from anywhere in the world. Moreover, the latest versions of the E-4 feature a glass cockpit, which is heavily modified to facilitate the plane's advanced avionics and power systems. The E-4 taking off from the runway is a sight to behold. The maintenance crew performs pre-flight procedures, such as inspecting the landing gear, engines, and fuel levels of the aircraft. the pilots enter the cockpit, start the engines and taxi the aircraft towards the runway. Once the control tower provides the green signal, the pilots slowly speed up the airplane and take off into the skies. Due to the E-4's high mission operational need, these planes are almost always unavailable for training purposes. In the past, pilots relied on a non-E-4 representative Boeing 747 training device located in Florida. Therefore, the Air Force recently introduced an E-4 simulator at a facility in La Vista, Nebraska. This is used to train the next generation of E-4 pilots without putting any existing aircraft at risk. With a small aircraft fleet, this simulator allows a strategic training advantage, enabling recurring and upgrade training while retaining aircraft availability for operations. The aircrew can now become efficient in E-4's flight procedures and practice dangerous maneuvers that can't be performed in the aircraft, like shutting down multiple engines or recovering the aircraft from stall conditions. Electronic warfare aircraft play a vital role in military operations. They serve as vital assets, providing invaluable surveillance, command, control, and communication capabilities. With technological advancements and the introduction of different models such as the E-3 and E-4, these platforms continue to evolve, ensuring their relevance in modern warfare. They demonstrate their importance as guardians of the skies by staying ahead in electronic warfare and safeguarding national interests. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.